Justin freaking Trudeau has done it yet again. He's going around and he's insulting everybody. This is insane. He calls a Indian singer a Punjabi singer, which has turned out to be extremely insulting. You also have Trudeau who has spoken with Trump since the assassin, assassin, assassination attempt, which is wild because Trudeau has been very, very public about his detest for President Trump. But I mean, that doesn't really matter since Trudeau is going to be out of office and Trump will be in. Anyways, we also have Danielle Smith, the premier of Alberta, who's going, hey, man, people need to start changing. The media needs to start changing how they are portraying conservative politicians or people of the opposition because look at what just happened to Trump and it's very concerning. But on the flip side, you have liberals going, it's not concerning at all. Hmm. Lots of different things to cover in this video. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you all to smash like button, subscribe if you haven't already. It does really help grow the channel. And just a gentle reminder, this is indeed the extra channel. And I would really appreciate it if you guys showed this one the same love that you do all of the others. Some love for ado. Let's just jump into it. So we're going to start off with the polls are looking very favorable for Pierre Polyev and the Conservative Party. 214 seats projected. Bottom line of 179. Top end of 234. 71 seats projected for Justin Trudeau. It turns out he has gone down and Pierre has gone up 99% likely, excuse me, across the board for the conservatives to win the most seats and win a majority government. So everything there in Canada is looking really good, except for Justin Trudeau. The Toronto Star is reporting Trudeau is reckoning with the decision of his political life. Here's why few know what he will do. Many are questioning whether it's time for the Prime Minister to step down as leader of the Liberal Party, but coming up with the answer is a uniquely solitary exercise, and it's just really not looking good. This is a moment of reckoning for Prime Minister Trudeau, the question of whether to stay or go, or to deliver some other kind of dramatic change the Liberal Caucus is clamoring for is one of the most sensitive and solitary exercises the Prime Minister can undertake. And of course, uh, Justin Trudeau has been flirting with the idea of bringing in Mark Carney, who is, I mean, I'll go out and say it, is a way better financial candidate than Christian Freeland. At least he has financial experience working for the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England, which don't get me wrong. That's not me endorsing him by any means. He is a globalist. He is, if I'm not mistaken, a part of the WEF, but just by sheer experience and knowledge, at least he's able to say the budgets don't balance themselves. And also fresh blood coming into the Liberal Party would mean that, hey, there's somebody that hasn't built up enough of a reputation for the majority of Canadians to hate, even though a lot of Canadians have an opinion of Mark Carney. He might actually be a tiny bit of a saving grace for the Liberals if they choose to bring him in, however that looks. But if they bring him in under Trudeau, then the F Trudeau protests are still very, very relevant. And again, people are going to be voting for Trudeau or against Trudeau for the federal election. So the really the only way the Liberal Party can ever save face is if they get rid of Justin Trudeau. But we all know his ego is going to sink the ship, which is what we are all hoping for. Next up, we're going to take a look at Premier Danielle Smith, who says things have gone too far. The way in which conservative politicians have been characterized is outrageous. They need to dial it down. Let's take a look at this. Uh, I think everybody's very concerned. We, when you see uh, an attempted assassination and that kind of political violence, there's, it's unacceptable. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're beginning to see that they've recognized that things have gone too far. Uh, the, the way in which conservative politicians have been characterized is outrageous. And that is, I think, led to the culture that we've seen in the U.S. And I certainly hope that uh, some of the progressive politicians here are careful of their language because they've been talking about conservative politicians in the same way and they need to dial it down. Like what? Have you not looked at uh, uh, the headlines about how Pierre Polyev is described as dangerous? how the leader of the opposition in Alberta has described me as dangerous. When you start using that kind of rhetoric, that ends up creating an elevated risk for all of us. And I think we have to be very mindful that we can have a disagreement in politics, but we have to stick to the issues. This is what I love about this table, actually, is that we come from different political perspectives. And we're all able to get along and find areas of agreement. You're a pretty forceful speaker yourself, Premier Smith, and I wonder if you've had, as you've asked others to take some reflection, have you had any reflection about your own rhetoric? I always stay focused on issues and focused on uh, finding uh, ways that we can debate issues, and I think it should be focused on issues. I think when you start name-calling, 
and you start calling um, and start describing people in a way that um, that uh, is inappropriate and creates a, a dangerous environment. I think people have to be self-reflective. About Thanks, that. everybody. Like, and this is something that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals at the provincial, municipal, and, pro- and obviously federal level have been really going on about the conservatives that Pierre Polyev is, you know, attacking like free speech. And the only one who protects free speech and democracy here in Canada is Justin Trudeau, which is absolutely insane. I mean, the one who has literally implemented policies to take away free speech and attack our democracy is Justin Trudeau. But you see that the conservatives are, you know, not necessarily scared, but there's reasons to worry. Of course, the leader of the opposition in America just got shot in the head. And here's what the liberals have to say here in Canada about this. They are not worried at all. Are you worried about yourself personally holding public events after what happened to the Trump vote? No, I, I have every confidence that the RCMP uh, take all the steps necessary Uh, to protect uh, Canadian politicians. Uh, Yesterday I convened a briefing with the Commissioner of the RCMP, the Director of CSIS, uh, the Deputy Minister of Public Safety. They went through the threat landscape. They talked to me about uh, the additional uh, vigilance that they've put in place since uh, the assassination attempt on former President Trump Saturday evening. Um, CSIS is always uh, at work collecting information that helps the the RCMP adjust the security posture where necessary, you'll understand that we don't discuss details of particular security measures. That's one of the advice, pieces of advice that we get. Um, but I am confident that the RCMP uh, will do what's necessary to protect elected leaders in Canada. I exchanged messages, uh, text messages with Mr. Poliev yesterday as well to assure him that the RCMP were in contact with his office. And there again, all of the appropriate steps will be in place to ensure that people can participate in a democracy in a safe way. Uh, If you want to change the government, you participate in an election and you go to vote. Uh, You don't engage in acts of political violence. That's what's so disturbing about what we saw with former President Trump on Wednesday evening where uh, innocent people participating in a political event were severely injured and in the case of one person lost his life. Um, That's obviously worrisome in every democracy. I was in Washington last week and met with Secretary Mayorkas, the Homeland Security Secretary, and on Wednesday evening we actually discussed the increased risk of violence uh, in, in political campaigns and against political leaders. And then when I spoke to him Saturday evening when we saw what had happened at President Trump's rally, it reminded us of the importance of working together and taking all the steps that are necessary. Right. And so, of course, it's easy for him, who works for the government, to say that he's not worried. But what about the opposition? The opposition has every reason to be worried because look at what just happened in America. The most obvious mistake was slipped through the cracks. And the rhetoric here in Canada is very worrisome of how Justin Trudeau tries to label Pierre Polyev with all the... I'm going to use his own words, missing disinformation that Justin Trudeau tries to, you know, spout about. He's guilty of that at the highest level himself. And so I'm, I'm not saying that I've ever seen posts calling for this to happen towards any conservatives here in Canada. But I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy that this just happened to the United States president, Donald Trump, or the former and next United States president. Very, very bizarre. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Is this something that Canada should take a little bit more seriously? Looking forward to what you guys have to say. Speaking of America, you have the potential, the potential next vice president for Donald Trump, Vivek, says that uh, Justin Trudeau is just a pawn. He's an absolute dumbass. Let's take a look at this. He's like a Klaus Schwab Jr., sort of a Klaus Schwab disciple. And I think that he is somebody who is a useful puppet. I mean, it's not that this guy is some sort of shining intellect that is somehow a visionary in his own right. He's not. He's a pawn for a managerial class, both within and outside of Canada, that uses people like him as a pawn to advance a you know, transnational globalist agenda that has a single hegemonic view that is fundamentally skeptical of self-governance does not believe in people's ability to govern themselves, believes in a worldview where people need to be told what the right way is or isn't to live by a small group of aristocratic elites in the back of palace halls. That was the old world European view. It's what's alive and well in Canada, unfortunately, today. And the idea that Trudeau is actually the guy calling the shots is a joke. He's just a puppet, a 
pawn for that deeper, what I would call permanent state. And I think that much similar to the United States, I think that that's a big part of what you're seeing happening in Canada now as well. He's like a Klaus Schwab Jew. We're going to have to wait and see if he actually becomes Trump's VP. This is very exciting. Today is a massive, massive day for news in America and for the world. And speaking of massive news, now we're going to take a look at this clip of Justin Trudeau just being a competent buffoon. Here we go. So Trudeau is participating in all of these dances he's on stage the canadian uh, prime minister congratulated diljit diljit on the profound cultural and economic impact of his work and the sold out stadium shows he has what he has achieved in canada and it somehow became extremely controversial because justin trudeau called him a, a guy from punjab and it's having immense amount of repercussions. I mean, the Times of India is saying deliberate mischief. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau draws flack for referring to Diljit Dosanjh as Punjabi singer, which isn't the correct word. Instead of an Indian singer, <laughs> how do you how do you friggin' support these things? And you don't even do your research. And at the global level, as the as a world leader, somehow Justin Trudeau is somehow still considered a world leader. Refers to somebody by by the wrong terminology. Kind of funny, but yeah, no, nothing wrong with Trudeau. He's 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 got all his ducks in a row, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone believes that anymore. Uh, and here is the article of CBC saying Trudeau speaks with Trump following assassination attempt on former president. Uh, according to a summary of the call provided by the Prime Minister's office, Trudeau condemned yesterday's appalling assassination attempt and reiterated there's no place for political violence, which is kind of crazy because Trudeau has sent in, who's he's kind of turned Canada into a police state, first of all. Second of all, he's the one who's been implementing violence by his authority on peaceful protesters here in Canada for several years now. And, uh, and third of all, how was he late to the post of condemning this on social media he was later than pierre paul yeah pierre beat him by over 30 minutes or 30 minutes right to the t justin trudeau is the prime minister of the country he has people that have access to all the socials his people working around the clock he is worth a hundred million dollars apparently is net worth how did he miss that by 30 minutes how did pierre the leader of the opposition who's just himself right has a few people working for him maybe a little bit of a credit card allowance from the taxpayers fund but doesn't really use it he's been pretty good at not using taxpayers money for personal or business related expenses so i just don't really understand how just trudeau was late to it but maybe you guys down in the comments have something to say about this i would love to know what you guys think that's where we're going to end this video everybody on your way out i would like to encourage you guys to smash the like button subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one bye for now